Saudi Cup 2021. As the day dawns in the kingdom, this vibrant city awakes. Centuries of tradition. Heritage and culture entwined. with an evolving modern dream. Art is big, art is bold. Every picture paints a unique story. The richest horse race in the world. A golden prize awaits. And brand new scenes are being painted on the social, cultural and sporting canvas here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Welcome along to King Abdulaziz Racetrack, to Riyadh in this Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Nick Luck alongside Michelle Yu in the build-up to the world's richest horse race, Michelle, the $20 million Saudi Cup. It was exciting last year, Nick, and the promise of a big purse and the excitement brought in all of the great connections internationally to come down to Saudi Arabia despite what's going on in the world. Everyone here in fine form for this exciting evening. We've had wonderful racing already. The United States seek to dominate the Saudi Cup and in two very exciting, still improving horses in Charlatan and Nick's Go, they may yet do so. I definitely think we're going to be having some improvement from at least one of them, if not both of them. Uh, you know, these trainers have been thinking about this race, and you want to have this horse peak at this certain time, and both of these trainers are excellent at doing that. You have to have a horse getting ready for their biggest effort, you know, and they both do it so well. I'm so excited to see how they perform tonight. Now we are pretending it's as warm as it habitually is here in the desert. I can assure you that it is not. It is 11 degrees Celsius, just over 51 degrees Fahrenheit. It's snowing in the north of the kingdom, but cold as it might be, cold as we might be, the action on the racetrack is about to get red hot as we introduce you to the rest of our broadcast team here. And we will start off with Tom Stanley. Nick, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, it's uh, look, it's just quieting down here in the weighing room. This is where all the riders have weighed out ahead of their ride in the $20 million Saudi Cup. Uh, we've had Mikhail Barcelona in here, of course, has picked up that ride on Max Player. Fascinating ride. He's got Mikhail Barcelona, one of the top dirt riders in the UAE, and he will be riding Max Player. Here is William Buick alongside me. He's just um, sorting out his weight ahead of a, a big ride on Tastas. That's a fascinating ride for William Buick. Will he get the, the best out of this horse, Bill Mott's Tacitus? who is apparently a bigger, stronger horse this year. And I'm sure Will is looking forward to, to partnering up with him. And um, I've just seen Mike Smith come in and out as well. I'm sure he's looking forward to trying to go one better in the $20 million uh, Saudi Cup. He must have a really good chance, particularly how this is riding. The guys have talked about it. Horses coming from just a little off the pace down the center of the track. Will that suit how this horse is, is likely to be ridden? It could well do on Charlatan. And make no mistake... It's going to be Nick's go, who is a go from the front. Let's join Hayley Moore. Talking of the calm before the storm, I'm down here in the pre-parade ring where connections who have travelled from around the world to get their horses ready ahead of the big one. As you can see, it's all quite calm at the minute. A couple of the saddles are just over to my side there, looking to go on board Great Scott very shortly and also Derivo looking forward to it as everyone is building up towards the big one. And just over here, coming over in the distance, we can see 
the runners for the Saudi Cup. And now the crowd stand here at King Abdulaziz Racecourse for the national anthem of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The arrival there of the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And with the Crown Prince and his entourage here at King Abdulaziz racetrack, we can begin the build-up in earnest to the Saudi Cup 2021. The second running of the Saudi Cup, bringing forward a representative international field, not just horses from the United States, but also from Great Britain and from Japan, from Ireland, from Bahrain, plus all the big hopefuls locally trained here in Riyadh. It's a full field of 14 horses that are run over one mile, one furlong, that's a mile and an eighth. And these are the horses that will take their chance. Two is Bangkok, trained in Great Britain by Andrew Balding, multiple champion jockey. Ryan Moore takes the ride. He needs to up his game first try on dirt, but he's in form. Light on experience, but big on talent, Charlatan will break from stall number nine under Hall of Famer Mike Smith for perennial leading trainer Bob Baffert. He's crossed the wire first in all four of his career outs. Four is the big hope for Japan and shouldn't be discounted despite gate one. Chu Wa Wizard was the winner of Japan's most prestigious dirt race, the Champions Cup last time. Holly Doyle will be aboard extra elusive here, gonna be breaking from stall number 14. This horse will love the distance, but it's gonna be the dirt debut. And six is Global Giant, ridden by Frankie Dettori, 50 years old, but riding as well as ever on the global stage. Takes the ride for John Gosden and Bahraini ownership. Locally based, Great Scott has reeled off three in a row since his appearance in last year's Cup. And he looks to try and take the trophy down today for local connections. Eight is Nix Go, a horse on a roll since joining Eclipse award-winning trainer Brad Cox comes here fresh from success in the Pegasus World Cup at Gulfstream Park in Florida. Max Player comes in here after competing in all three of last year's Triple Crown events. Mikhail Barcelona will be taking over for Umberto Rispoli in the Irons for Steve Asmussen. Ten is military law. There are higher profile horses in this race, but this one is in the peak of health, as evidenced by his victory in the Maktoum Challenge in Dubai. Antonio Fresu rides. Mishrif was second last year in the Saudi Derby. We'll see if he can return to the dirt in that high form. David Egan will be aboard for John Gosden. 12 is Sim Seer, globetrotting jockey Adri De Vries is one of the best in this field and he rides for Bahrain-based trainer Fauzi Nass, who's enjoying the season of his life. The ever-popular Sleepy Eyes Todd, going to be ridden by locally-based rider Alexis Moreno for Miguel Silva. He's versatile and he's won two of his last three outs. 14 is Tacitus, so often frustrating, but so talented. Bill Mott, trainer of the Mighty Cigar, has saddled this one. What a spare ride for William Buick, replacing John Velazquez. Derivo made quite the impression when locally imported to win the custodian of the two holy mosques last time out. He'll take a cut back in distance here with Christian Dumuro aboard. Antonio Fresu, who rides military law in the big one, the $20 million Saudi Cup. How do you rate his chances, Antonio? Well, uh, the horse uh, is well, and um, he surprised us when he won over a mile, which is a bit short for him. But um, he won it in a great style, and uh, the form worked out well because of the great collection and the Salute Soldier repeat the, 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 the performance. Uh, last time in the second round, finishing uh, first and second. So. Um, 
I I rode him a couple of times here in the last couple of days, and uh, he gave me a great feeling, uh, especially on the surface. Uh, I think uh, he will like the track because uh, there is a long stretch uh, in the backside and uh, it's a long bend, you know, and the, and the straight is uh, slightly longer than Maiden, so that will help him because 1800 is still a little bit short. I, I guess, like, uh, he's a probably, I'm sure he's a probably 10 foot long horse, so. Are you happy with the draw? Uh, you know, it's, it's not the best, but uh, it's not that bad, you know, because uh, there will be lots of pace and uh, probably, you know, with, with that draw I can find uh, a nice position uh, and um, hopefully he can be in his comfort zone and uh, uh, so hopefully it will work well. Antonio, very best of luck. Thank you very much. Antonio Fres, who's speaking with Tom Stanley, and horse is now being saddled in the pre-parade ring ahead of the 2021 running of the world's richest horse race, the Saudi Cup. There is number 15, Derivo, in shot. We're all set. For over two decades, OTI has created premium racing partnerships, striving for success at the highest level and involving our owners every step of the way. OTI Racing. Race with integrity. Race with passion. Race with us. Thoracare SA. Racing SA's new equine welfare arm. The horse is at the heart of everything we do. And to reinforce this, Racing SA has committed 1% of prize money towards equine welfare initiatives, including the ongoing support and promotion of thoroughbred horses before, during and after their racing careers. For more information, visit thoroughcaresa.com.au. Racing agenda. We have Zach, I think, cool side there in Hong Kong looking very relaxed. Craig, thanks so much for your time, mate. Welcome to the show. Nice to be here, guys. After the last, Monday and Wednesday, racing.com. Guys, I'm down here in the pre-parade ring watching the horses get saddled for the Saudi Cup. Charlatan just stepped out of the box, but he was being absolutely perfect there while he was being saddled. Still standing over here right now is Max Player. Uh, they had Neil Posnanski, the assistant for Bill Mott, helping saddle this horse here. Steve Asmussen did not make it into town for the race, and they're going to keep him in the box right here. He's a little on the nervous side, but not terrible, I would say. The other day they did gate school him and he was a little reluctant to load. So I'd like to see him really focus once he gets on the track. I'll tell you the horse that looks very comfortable right now is Sleepy Eyes Todd. He's been a, a big draw to the media out here because he comes out and he stands. He knows his name. Everyone likes to hoot and holler at him. But he's a horse that has experience under the lights. Not every American horse has that. And now Charlatan coming back in, like I said, after he got his... Uh, saddle on he went and took a lap around the ring he's just being poised and perfect but this is what we expect from bob baffert trainees they are very well schooled and they know their job ahead denata lani uh the bloodstock agent is on hand here to watch charlatan and jimmy barnes longtime assistant for bob baffert here standing by guys back with you michelle very shortly great work down there in the pre-parade ring this is just the second running 
of the Saudi Cup, the world's richest horse race, inaugurated last year with that memorable, for so many reasons, finish between Maximum Security and Midnight Bizu. And therefore, you'd be forgiven for thinking that horse racing was something new here in the kingdom. Far from it. There's been real depth of enthusiasm and passion for the thoroughbred, thoroughbred racehorse here for, for decades, for generations. And it was just last month that we lost a son of this kingdom who perhaps did more than any other single man to really shape the breed. When these silks were first worn to victory in 1979, few could have imagined the impact they would have over the next four decades. Prince Khalid Abdullah, who died last month, was this kingdom's most storied horse racing ambassador. A nephew of Saudi Arabia's founder, and having built up a notable business empire, he applied his renowned intellect to a relentless pursuit of excellence in the thoroughbred racehorse. Within seven years, he had bought not just the horse of a lifetime, but the horse of a generation. The diminutive dancing brave whose infamy for losing the derby he should have won could be matched only by the sheer admiration for his blistering victory in the Arc de Triomphe. But for his owner, this was simply the seed corn for the bumper harvest that followed, as the prince invested in prime farmland and the best broodmares to grow his own champions on both sides of the Atlantic through his Judmont farms. Hundreds of top-level victories followed, but it was in recent years that the project reached perfection, chiefly through the exploits of Frankel, undefeated, Prince Khalid's best, and the best most of us have ever seen. A triumph, too, for this modest prince's loyalty to his much-beloved but mercurial trainer, Sir Henry Cecil. Frankel was the greatest act, but no finale, as Arrogate flew the flag briefly but brutishly on the global stage. And the indomitable supermare Enable would have been the shining jewel in the crown of any other owner or breeder. Enable has visited Kingman this week at stud, in a bid to produce the next generation and to ensure that the legacy lives on and that the pink, green and white should remain a reassuring constant at the summit of our sport. Guys, I'm Dan here, joined by assistant trainer to Bill Mott, Neil Posnanski. Prince Khaled was such a meaningful part of thoroughbred racing. How poignant would it be able to win this race under his silks? Well, that would be a true storybook ending, wouldn't it? I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, it was nice to bring him here while he was still with us, but to be able to come here again today, and you know, if we could pull up an offset, pull, up, pull off the upset. Um, you know, in his honor, that would be that would be something. How was this Tacitus different than the Tacitus of 2020? He's bigger, stronger. Um, he just he's just got it all put together. It seems right now. If you were riding him, what trip would you give him tonight? I would probably be in behind the speed horses and uh, just looking to not get stopped. <laughs> basically, um, you know, and, and hopefully be able to pounce on them when the time was right. Best of luck. You have a whole nation behind you. Thank you very much. And this is a possibility victory for Tacitus. He's not always been the most predictable, but he's certainly got the talent. And a rather lovely gesture a little earlier on, Prince Bandar, the chairman of the Jockey Club of Saudi Arabia, made a presentation two representatives of Prince Khalid's family in Judmont Farms of framed silks, the pink, green and white silks that have graced race courses across the globe at group and grade one level for four decades and hopefully will do for many, many years to come. Tacitus, one of the big players here for the United States, but few would argue he is the biggest player at this stage. That honour befalls either Charlatan with so much promise or Nick's go, who has achieved so much of late, winner of the Breeders' Cup, Dirt Mile in spectacular style, and dominant most recently in the Pegasus World Cup. And his rider, Joel Rosario, is now with Tom Stanley. Joel Rosario joins me ahead of a, a big race ride 
on the brilliant Nick's go. Uh, Joel, how is the, the horse uh, ahead of this start in a $20 million race? I mean, you, I, as you can see, you know, he's been improving every race that he ran, and uh, here we are, and uh, you see how he come into this race, you know. I know he's a fast horse, so we'll see what happened today. What do you make of the one turn for him? And also a turn which is, you know, it almost swings slightly downhill. Not, not a lot, but it's, it, and it's not a tight turn by any stretch. But do you think that'll suit him? I mean, yeah, I hope so. You know, he seemed like he's get over the track good. You know, they watch his, 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 it work out. But, you know, you know, you don't know until you go and, 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 and try and see. We've enjoyed watching him in the mornings, Joel. Uh, he's not an easy horse to hold, is he? He wants to go. Yeah, he's fast. He's well, just want to just, you know, go there and do his, his work and then... Uh, yeah, uh, he's a fast horse. Um, we saw you earlier finish second on Cowan's, a, a great run, great ride from him. But your experience on the dirt track out there, do you think this surface is going to suit Nick's go? I mean, the way he get over it, you know, I think he, he will. And, but like I say again, it, it's so up, you know, we'll see how he, you know, get over it. You know, he's been training good and then stuff like that. So we'll see how he, you know, go forward and then with the speed that he has, we'll see if he can, you know, get over that track well. It's great to have you back here at the Saudi Cup. Very best of luck. Thank you so much. Joined right now by Tom Ryan of the ownership group, group for Charlatan. What do you feel like right now as this horse walking around the pre parade ring? Lots of anxiety, lots of anxiety. But look, I feel great. Um, the horse couldn't have saddled any better. He's behaved like a pure gentleman over here. He's, he's very professional. He's done everything right all week. So Jimmy and the boys are all very happy. And Bob's, uh, Bob's happy coming in here. This horse has just shown such raw talent. Has it been just thrilling to be able to see him develop? Yes. <laughs> what about tonight? What do you think he's going to do? I, I, look, I love this spot. I think he fits it perfectly, and uh, hopefully he breaks away clean and we have a fair race. How important is it to have a horse like this on a global stage? It's very, it's very important for America. And this is a great uh, opportunity for the rest of the world to get involved in the Middle East. and It's... it's it's an amazing trophy, $20 million race. It's, uh, it puts a lot of eyes on the sport. Best of luck. Thank you. That's for Charlatan, guys, here in the Saudi Cup. Charlatan trained by Hall of Famer and global racing legend Bob Baffert. Bob Baffert wouldn't be drawn when asked to compare this horse with his recent Kentucky Derby hero and Breeders' Cup Classic winner Authentic, but you sensed that he felt he was of comparable ability, if not rather more speed. And Mike Smith earlier today described him as potentially one of the all-time greats. We'll find out whether he can deliver at 20 to the hour. Samazdat on the outside, grabbing the lead now from Regal Power, and Samazdat races away to win the Asian. Mystic Journey over the top, takes the lead. She is one for the Maple. Mystic Journey's won the All-Star line. Blackheart Mark just in front of home, but previous winners might announce Blackheart Mark turns back the clock. What a marvel! The world's first biological control for grazing animals substantially reduces recontamination onto pasture, breaks the worm cycle naturally. For further information, visit biowormer.com or contact us on the hotline. What happens on the bus stays on the bus. <laughs> I drive people to the races and drive them home. This chap and his wife will bring home. That one there. I hate to see people having accidents caused by drinking and driving. I get the satisfaction of knowing that the people that I've looked after get home safely. I believe there's a granddad in every community. Make sure you've got a plan to get yourself home safely. Don't just watch the race. Here we go. Be in the race. Join Triple Crown's winning team. Rizzle for the lead of the 600. Triple Crown syndications are Australia's leading syndicators with unrivaled group race success. Rizzle's clear of the 100 metres. Plus they've won the world's richest turf race, the Everest, twice. Rizzle, he's home in the Everest. Get into the action and enjoy the thrills, excitement and success. Start your journey in racehorse ownership at triplecrown.com.au. Triple Crown, live the dream. If you didn't catch That's Racing, this is what you missed. Hanging around to find another one that's got my name in it until Sarah said the other day, oh, look, Mr Quickie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Mr Quickie. That's Racing, new to Tuesday nights on Racing.com.
the warmest of welcomes back to a, a now quite full parade ring ahead of the world's richest horse race, the Saudi Cup. Most of the horse is now in, and there is Nick's go, who's on a roll. He's seeking his fifth consecutive victory, his biggest prize to date. He's a Breeders' Cup hero. He routed his field, albeit an inferior field today, in the Pegasus World Cup recently at Gulfstream Park, earning him an automatic berth to this race. He'll be ridden by Joel Rosario for Brad Cox. Cox himself had four winners at the Breeders' Cup. He had a barnstorming 2020. He is the Eclipse Award-winning trainer in the United States. Let's hear from him now. He can't be here today, but he gave us his thoughts on Nick's go. With a gate-to-wire demolition of the field at the Pegasus World Cup in Miami, Nick's go blew away the last remaining clouds of doubt about his credentials. And Nick's go continues to roll on the top end into the stretch drive on top by three with an eighth of a mile more to get. Here's Jesus' team down the center trying to make a late impression with Independence Hall. Final 16th of a mile. It's all about Nick's go. Nick's go makes it four in a row. A Breeders' Cup, a Pegasus World Cup, and a slam dunk. He won by two and a half. My thoughts on the Pegasus were, you know, we'll... we'll... We'll see how it goes. We'll see if he's able to win. Uh, you know, I want, I don't want to use the word with ease because I don't think he won easily, but he wasn't really headed or he didn't have to fight off another horse or Joel didn't ha really have to get into him or he didn't just hang on. So I thought we saw enough the night of the race after and the next morning to say, hey, you know, the horse looks like he bounced out of it well. He scoped well, no Lasix for the first time. Um, and we saw all the positive things we need to see in order to keep the Saudi race in play and we continue to see that you know everything so far is what you want to see he's a, like i said earlier he's not a big horse but he carries really good weight i mean he's a horse that you know he he you can't count a rib on him he really carries good weight what we've seen so far are all the positive signs you want to see as far as running a horse back in four weeks a grade one winner at age two the horse disappointed at three failing to win in any of his eight starts but a move to trainer Brad Cox reversed his fortunes as he reeled off three in a row, culminating with a record-setting performance in the Breeders' Cup Mile. He's he's a stout horse. He's very strong, um, but but not a not a tall horse. But you know, very forward mentally. He does train, you know, very forward. He gives you a lot of confidence with his works. Um, horse that's. Um, you know, he, he knows when to shut it off, though. Like, he, I think that's the, the, the classy that he has and, and shows is, you know, his ability. Like, when you school him in the afternoons, he schools well. I mean, he's, of course, probably wouldn't think needs to school. We still put him through that process. In the paddock prior to the race, he's, he's calm, he's cool. He doesn't overdo it. And then, obviously, when the gate comes open, he knows his job. and He's able to, you know, um, use his speed to, to get in position. Now we wait eagerly for his anticipated clash with Charlatan, which has all the makings of a classic confrontation. And the question is, will Nick's go be painting the town red? Trainer Brad Cox has no doubt. That's another thing that's given us a lot of confidence with this process of going to Saudi um, is the, the, just his whole uh, mindset. He's got a great mind. He knows when it's showtime. And as far as the afternoon, he knows when the gate comes open. He's all business. He looks very relaxed today. Nick's go. Michelle has come to, to join me. I was feeling a little lonely, but great work out there. This is a, an exciting horse now, isn't it? We kind of have to forget the mid part of his career when he lost his way. Well, I think it was they lost his way. I think he was just resentful of what they were asking him to do. Brad Cox has said that what they like to do in their barn is let a horse do what they want. And this horse likes to be aggressive. He likes to gallop fast. He likes to have big goes. Um, he likes to open his lungs up every time he goes out to the track. And that's been duplicated in the afternoons. And since they've let him do this, go to the front, he's been a completely different horse. The gentleman walking to the left in the dark jacket is assistant trainer Dustin Dugas, and he gets on this horse. He has arms of steel from holding this horse in the mornings, Nick. This is the big hope for Europe. Mishrif was second in the Saudi Derby last year. Can he go one better in the race that matters most, not just to his trainer, John Gosden, but also to his owner, Prince Faisal, who is here today. John's son, Thady, is supervising his preparation. He's now with Haley Moore.
Thanks very much, Nick. Yeah, Thady uh, intently overseeing proceedings here, and so far, so good. Um, just talk about how Mishrif is coming into today's race. He's very well, you know, he's come over, he travelled well, and uh, he's been training well since he's been here. He's obviously been here before, so he's pretty relaxed around the place, and it seems to know what he's doing. He looks a lot relaxed in comparison to your other runner in the field. Is David quite confident as well? I know, yeah, David's in good form, you know, he's obviously a brilliant jockey and he's had a few rides yesterday and a few rides today. So he's got the hang on the track, hopefully. And the horse, yeah, you know, he seems very relaxed at the moment. He's got the hood on there in the paddock. And uh, it's a pretty, it's a big stadium, a lot of people here. So it's nice he's able to, to keep that edge off him. It's been intriguing watching him because he does look nice and calm today and, and well composed. I suppose the experience from last year holding him in good stead. Global Giant, he's a little bit more lively, but you've got a good man on board. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's always a very expressive horse, even at home. And he's, uh, it's a good thing, if anything. You know, so he's fresh and well here. And we've obviously got a pretty good pilot on board there, so we'll see what he does. When was it the plan to head over to Saudi Arabia and try and contend this big race with your two runners? So Global Giant, we're always planning on coming here. But which race was kind of the big question. And uh, his Highness Sheikh Issa opted to go for this race in the end. So he thought, why not go for the big one? And uh, the other horse, you know, is obviously owned by um, Prince, Prince Faisal from Saudi Arabia. So he, he, it was a pleasure for him to represent Saudi Arabia here. And also, you know, obviously um, he won the French Derby over a mile and a quarter. So he thought that hopefully the mile and one should be OK for him. Well, it's really exciting to have them both here and well done for getting them uh, to race today. Even that's a big achievement in itself. So we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much, Eddie. Fady Gosden, son of trainer John, multiple champion trainer John on the chances of Mishrif. And believe me, he's a legitimate contender. Speaking of which, here is Charlatan. He may only have raced a couple of times, but he is a serious racehorse. Find out how serious in a moment. At OTI, the thrill of racing goes beyond the track. We are driven by a passion for the sport, a quest for racetrack success at the highest level, and creating unforgettable experiences for our owners. With over 20 years of experience in global racing partnerships, our mission is to involve you every step of the way, while ensuring the welfare of your horses beyond their racing career. OTI Racing. Race with integrity. Race with passion. Race with us. Adelaide Cup Day 2021, Monday 8th of March. Book now at morfittville.com.au. Don't chase your losses. Walk away. Gamble responsibly. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in Australian men. Statistics are against Australian men. The race is on to improve men's health. There's only one place to see a complete wrap of a big Saturday of racing. That was Craig Williams at his absolute best. Delusion through the centre for Willow wins the last. The Wrap, Sunday edition, every Sunday morning on Racing.com. $20 million are on the table. It focuses the mind. The beady eyes of Adri de Vries. And there is Mikel Barcelona riding Max Player. Adel Alfaradi, the local man who's had such a memorable weekend. Antonio Frezu aboard military law for Dubai. And 
what a day it's been for Japan. Keita Tosaki. William Buick aboard Tacitus in those Judmont Farm silks. And if they were to pass the post in front, one of their most famous victories. Holly Doyle now rides in these silks regularly. She's made history already today. David Egan, youngest rider in the field on Mishrim. Michelle Yu, what a race in prospect. What a race. Uh, Nick, first of all, I want to talk about the warm-up that Tacitus got. We watched him kind of dart away from here. Normally in America, we go out with a pony, a little bit slower warm-up. William Buick turned him loose and set off at a high gallop, a proper warm-up for this horse. I would love to see him a little bit closer to what I expect to be a pretty hot pace. He doesn't have a huge turn of foot. He kind of grinds it out. And if you are in closer order, you don't have to make up as much of a deficit. And there will be plenty in America who will be saying now in living rooms all around the land, she's fallen for him again. She's <laughs> fallen for the beautiful Tacitus. But for all he is talented so often, he flatters to deceive. I'll tell you, if I have to pick one horse that's not the top two, for me it's the six global giant for John Gosden and Frankie Dettori. I really loved his second place finish to Simsar last time out. I thought he looked sensational. Well, Japan are going for three wins on the trot tonight. And here is Chiwa Wizard. And I put it to you, his defeat of Chris Aberrell last time on a collateral form line from last year's race puts him somewhere just around Tacitus. Yeah, exactly. He's competitive here. Is he the top echelon of this group? No, but that's not exactly what you need. Look at what the Japan horses did in the sprint. I mean, the, the winner was not in the top tier and was able to pull it out. It's going to get a great trip. I think he's going to like to stock. I'm not entirely sure the rail's the best place to be right now after the other races, but we'll see. Now here's an interesting run, a military law. His profile isn't as sexy as some in the race. He's an ex-John Gosden trainee. He's now trained in Dubai by Ma Musaba al Meheri, but he was eyeballs out to win round one of the Maxim Challenge. Well, last year, going into what would have been the Dubai World Cup, I felt like this was going to be a top-tier proper horse, and obviously when he didn't get to run in that event, we didn't know where he stacks up this year. Coming back with a win in the al Maktoum, I thought he looked okay, but I'm just not sure if he's quick. He could, if he can quicken enough to catch horses like Charlatan, like Nick's Go, who have that high cruising speed and are not coming back. From a physical standpoint, you cannot say he doesn't look good. I think he was so well turned out. And I love the attitude that Antonio Fresu has with him. Tom Stanley's down at the start for the Saudi Cup. Tom, how are they taking it? Do you know, they're all taking it in their stride, right in the middle there. There he is, one of three American greys in this field, and it is Nick's go for Brad Cox. Joel Rosario looks nice and calm in there. He'll be wanting to add to the two seconds he's had so far this evening at the Saudi Cup and go one better with this horse. He looks an absolute peach. Now, when we've seen him in the mornings, he's looked pretty full of himself. Not an easy horse to hold, but he looks pretty calm down there. He looks to be taking it all in, to be very happy down at the start, and we know what is likely to happen when those gates open. Uh, this horse just alongside, number five, alongside uh, with Holly Doyle on board. He's got the red hood on, uh, needs to prove that he can handle the uh, surface extra elusive. But Holly Doyle did request when she got down, she was the first horse to get down here, and she just said, can we take that hood off really late, as late as possible? She got down here very politely, very British. She said, sir, can I take my hood off late? which is exactly the way to conduct, to conduct yourself. So extra elusive over the far side. The atmosphere is building here down at the start. Disappointed you've not been referring to me as sir during the course of the day, Tom. Let's have a look at great Scott, Abdullah Mishrif and Adel Alfaradi teaming up. This is the local hope. He's a talented horse on his day, Michelle. You like a horse that has experience over the local track, obviously. This is going to be a big class test for him. Is he good enough to tangle with some of the best America has? I will say one thing about him. He looks a little bit warm. And in the pre-parade ring, he was being very naughty, Nick. He was kicking out. Um, they had a hard time saddling him. And even right now, you can see he's not intent on what his rider is doing. He's paying attention to the other horses. He's chewing on his bit. I don't think he's as focused that I'd like to see him. Two riders from the United States didn't make it here because of COVID travel problems. One was John Velasquez, William Buick now rides Tacitus. The other was Umbi Raspoli. Mikel Barcelona now rides for Steve Asmussen, who was second in the race last year with Midnight Bizu. They're going to be aggressive and put him in early because, see, he's backing out. Earlier this week, he did school in the gate, and he was not compliant. He did not want to go in the gate. He was very hesitant. It took them a while to load. I think they need to get him in there so he can get settled. He never actually settled when they schooled him. He was standing crookedly, and you you can see he's doing that right there as well. 
Global Giant is in with Frankie de Tori. Bangkok is near to you for Andrew Balding for Britain and Ryan Moore. Holly Doyle to the outside on extra elusive. But all eyes will be on the big two here, the lightly raced charlatan and the honor roll Nick's go to continue the American dominance. This is the second edition of the world's richest horse race, the 2021 Saudi Cup to call them home. Churchill Downs, voice of the Kentucky Derby, and now the voice of the Saudi Cup, Travis Stone. Thank you, Nick. Charlatan steps into line, moves in quickly and smoothly. Just a couple back there now. Derivo, one of them for $20 million. The second running of the Saudi Cup, extra elusive, given the starters. A little bit of a trouble there. Going to circle around and try and get him back in and bring the others up to the gate for this 1800 meter race, roughly nine furlongs. There's Derivo going forward. So Derivo jumps over extra elusive in terms of starting order. Moves in now. Here's extra elusive. Uh, goes right in. Extra elusive now in the starting gate for the Saudi Cup. Rest of the field standing in good order. The breeze has quieted. Great Scott goes in. A little reluctant there, but nonetheless steps forward for the Saudi Cup. They are in the gates, and they're off in the Saudi Cup. And Nick's go goes straight toward the front. Nick's go showing speed, and Charlatan is right with him. And Military Law is there. And Mishriff on the outside. Up the shoot in the Saudi Cup, and Charlatan's going to be the leader. Charlatan, from that outside post, has come on to take over the lead from Nick's go, who backs off into second. So Charlatan takes the race to Nick's go right off the mark. Nick's go back into second. Mishriff toward the inside is racing in third. Extra Lucid moving up into fourth. Right there to Military Law in fifth. Tacitus is not far behind. Tacitus is racing in sixth. Simsir is now seventh. Great Scott moving up on the inside from eighth. Global Giant is now ninth. The Reef was in tenth. Bangkok is eleventh. Sleepy Eyes Todd is in twelfth. Japan's Chua Wizard is second to last. Nine lengths off the lead as they move into the far turn. Max Player is the trailer. Nick's go comes on through to take the lead. Charlatan sticks right with him. And the race is on round the far turn in the Saudi Cup. Charlatan on the outside of Nick's go. Nick's go grinding it out. Charlatan right there too. Mishriff under pressure back in third. Tacitus is asked to go now. Great Scott angles to the outside for the final quarter mile. They're coming for the top of the stretch. Charlatan has shrugged off the challenge of Nick's go. Charlatan turning for home in front. Mishriff is now the challenger. They're off the turn. They're into the stretch. Charlatan digging down deep on the lead. Mishriff desperately trying to get by. Nick's go has been defeated. Great Scott and Tacitus coming down to the final 100 meters. Charlatan has to fend off the oncoming Mishriff. Mishriff is roused to the lead. Charlatan tries to fight back. It's doing so. Mishriff, Charlatan. Mishriff covers the cup. An upset winner defeating Charlatan. Great Scott. Nick's go settles for fourth. Sleepy Eyes Todd was fifth. It's Mishriff in Saudi. What was supposed to be a two horse race all week long, Nick's go in Charlatan ended up going to a third and that's Mishriff. Charlatan surprisingly went to the front. It was expected he would sit off of Nick's go early. Instead, they took the race to him. And perhaps those tactics cost them the race in the end as Mishriff worked out a perfect trip under Egan to find a seam, come on late. It was a long stretch drive. They had to work hard to get there. Charlton was stubborn, not letting him get by. David Eden kept at it, though, and he got up when it counted. The $20 million Saudi Cup to Mishriff. Charlton, what an effort, what a performance. An effort that wins most races like this. Finishes second, a long way back to Great Scott. And there's Nick's go, who couldn't make the lead, then came on through to challenge and ultimately has to settle for fourth and Sleepy Eyes Todd comes on to be fifth. In an epic Anglo-American clash here in Saudi Arabia, the 21-year-old David Egan has ridden the race of his life on the John Gosden train, Mishrif, to turn away big money Mike Smith and the big horse charlatan who went down all guns blazing, having shown brazen speed. Local horse Great Scott in third and Nick's go too much today. 
but this horse, Mishrif, and David Egan have won for Prince Faisal of Saudi Arabia and John Gosden for Great Britain. What a horse race, what a clash between two continents and two top-class horses. Classic winner beats Baffert's best. That was an amazing ride from young David Egan. He didn't let the top two horses get out of his sight. We talked about this horse not having a huge turn of foot. He didn't need it because David kept him in touch the entire way. When Charlatan cut the corner, he started to eke up that advantage, and down the lane, he just outwore him. Charlatan had to put up a fight early on. Mischief was able to save something. What a phenomenal effort down to the lane. This is exactly what that team wanted, the Gosden team. And Prince Bandar, the chairman of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia Jockey Club, he looks absolutely delighted because he has put the money on the table. He wanted them to come from all corners of the globe and to have a horse owned by a member of his family, Prince Faisal, very closely related to Prince Bandar, win the race for a British trainer, an Irish-born jockey, beating the best of America. It is exactly the melting pot that he could have dreamed of. And that broad smile across David Egan's face tells the story of a very cool ride, a very talented jockey and a very, very good racehorse, a tough racehorse too. Things have just gone right for this team all week long. They wanted an outside draw. They got an outside draw. They were able to sit right off the speed. They had no traffic to get through. He ran so bravely last year in defeat in the Saudi Derby, and he showed that he was no fluke on the dirt, and he is getting a massive <laughs> round of applause right now. I'm covered in goosebumps, Nick. This is lovely to see. David's cantering the horse right down past the grandstand to the VIP hospitality area and down to the furlong pole so everybody can appreciate exactly what this horse has done, Mishri, for homebred for Prince Faisal, who's had some wonderful horses around the world, his blue hen mare Rafa, the dam of Invincible Spirit and Kodiak, two of the, the great stallions in Europe in recent years, and he's got another proper one here and came back from the Saudi Derby last year to win the French Derby, the British Jockey Club, and be one of the best three-year-old colts in Europe, and it's great to see him go forward. Now the question, Nick, is what do you do with him? Well, you'd have to consider the Dubai, Dubai World, World Cup, Cup, right? And then you'd have to start thinking about back how to get to the Breeders' for, Cup for all the big prizes and then a tilt at the Breeders' Cup Classic, maybe. I mean, this horse just absolutely handled some of the best horses that the U.S. has to offer. So he's legitimate. We have to definitely think about giving him some kind of a campaign. Charlatan has run a huge race, a huge race on just his fourth career start under Mike Smith. But he is all speed. Smith said, I don't want to give away my natural gift easily. He didn't do that. He let him use his speed. But this mile and an eight on an easy surface probably just stretched him a little bit. Also, again, talking about that rail, maybe being a little bit heavier. That horse was moving really nicely. And then when Mike cut the corner and went down to the lane, he had to he fluffled a little bit. But David Egan has outdone big money Mike today. And here he is with Hayley Moore. Yeah, that's an achievement in itself. David, congratulations. You've just won the world's richest race. How are you feeling? Oh, I can't believe it. It was Mishrif that won. He's an absolute champion. It's just a privilege to be connected with such a class horse and just like to thank Prince Faisal, Mr. Gosden, all his team back home in Newmarket. Just everyone in connections with this horse has done a great job and uh, just delighted to get back aboard on the big day. This is when it counts in front of the audience, in front of his owner, in his country that he was born in as well. This is a very special victory in your career as well. Oh, it's unbelievable. Look, I always felt myself last year in the derby, if he hadn't missed the break and jumped slow, he nearly would have beaten the Japanese horse. So it's a redemption for him in Saudi. And uh, look, in Prince Faisal's backyard here in Saudi Arabia, it's, uh, it's an honor. It's great to come back here as well and get a victory like this. And your dad is here as well, which is even more special. You must be thrilled that he can enjoy this moment with you. Look, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't without my dad, John. He's uh, taught me everything I know. He's been a great dad and uh, delighted to have him here. And just finally, you were always well positioned throughout the run? Yes, delighted to get a good break. Um, spoke to a lot of people and I got a lot of good advice to ri ride on the dirt from people from America. and. Uh, Look, I spoke to a good friend of my dad's, Joe Deegan, who rode a lot in America, and he kind of went through the race with me, and it was really important to get a good jump today. Um, didn't expect that he was going to be able to travel so well in behind the leaders. He 
probably I didn't see the rest of the horse. We nearly probably travelled better than anything. And just up the straight when the two leaders kicked, it just took him a little while to get going. But uh, thank God he, he ran him home. Congratulations. Enjoy the moment. David Egan, what a moment for him. And so eloquent in victory as well. And, and Michelle, it's, it's worth noting that David Egan, he's a retained right. jockey to Prince Faisal. That's why Frankie de Tori doesn't ride this horse for John Gosney. He's David's ride. But last year, because of COVID, he couldn't travel to France. And it meant he missed the ride in the Prix de Jockey Club. Your Richmond Isabel rode him. He missed the ride at Deauville. Frankie de Tori rode him. De Tori kept the ride in the champion stakes. Now Egan's back on. And it's, uh, it's wonderful to see the partnership intact and the loyalty shown to this young rider by the winning owner. And like he said, this was redemption for Mischief. I think it was a great back ride for him. And talking about how some of the American riders helped him out, right? I'm sure Mike Smith might have been one of them. And, you know, by the time uh, David was born, Mike Smith had already won eight Breeders' Cup races. There was a lot of knowledge to impart there. Huge amount of knowledge, and he's ridden a very talented horse. But this horse has got the toughness. Mm -hmm. He's got the street wisdom. The question today was, could he take on the very best dirt horses that America could bring here? The answer was an emphatic and resounding yes. It is Mishrif, who is the hero of the Saudi Cup. Mask Crusader getting into his work now. He's starting to dig in. And Mask Crusader edges away to win it. Zelaya racing away the filly and goes on the win. Toronado. Viewings available at Melbourne Premier Sale. You may not hear from your lawyer at the best of times, but during the coronavirus crisis, it could even get worse. At Carbone Lawyers, we've adapted with video conferencing and expanded call centre to ensure your claims keep moving. Call Carbone Lawyers on 1-800-369-888 today. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in Australian men. Race the best with the best. Dynamics indications together with our leading team of trainers are the established source for racetrack success. Become part of our winning team. Visit dynamicsindications.com or call 1800 61 9999. Celebrating Peter Jackson's half year sale. Explore our most adventurous collection with shirts, sports jackets, and pure merino suits up to 60% off. Peter Jackson's half year sale. Peter Jackson. The son of Jack and Gondro from Jewel Group 1 with a Nemesis. It's heading out of the pack down the outside. And it's pending from the straight right. It's pending and pending from one to one. And it's another golden slip of the Hattie Land. Today, summer racing hots up with a competitive card from Werribee, Ballarat and Port Lincoln. Sassy Manoeuvre, scary go round the rail. Sassy Manoeuvre, lunging swing at sister, but Sassy Manoeuvre. Werribee Race Day, today, live on racing.com. Well, if you're rejoining us, a very warm welcome back to King Abdulaziz Racetrack here in Riyadh in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where for all that it might have been one of the, the chilliest nights in the kingdom, an epic battle between a very brave British trained horse and one of the best in America has really warmed us up, Michelle. One thing we can note too, these are both four-year-old horses. So on the younger side, maybe we get to see another showdown between the two of them. I thought this was an absolutely thrilling renewal of the Saudi Cup. We saw a great version last year, but this one, was really top-notch. Let's take a look back at the 2021 Saudi Cup from the stalls and Mishrif to the outside, aggressively ridden, breaks really smartly and he's already in with a shot. You know, he lost the Saudi Derby because he pretty much dwelt in the gate and wasn't involved early and just couldn't get there in time. Here, you look how forwardly placed he is. Obviously, the two American horses are pulling out in front like we knew that they would, but Mishrif is always within touch. He's two lengths back right there and like they wanted from that outside barrier draw, Nick, he's got a clean go of it. He he has a little bit of dirt being thrown back into him right now, but nothing like you would if you were buried down along the rail. There he is, just facing the kickback really nicely in hand. 
head low, lovely head carriage, must be a lovely ride. Now this is riding with Joel Rosario on Nick's go. How happy or not would he have been with his position? Charlatan showing more speed to his outside. Well, I think Nick's go looked kind enough to rate right here. Now, I like this move going into the turn because this is where Nick's go wins races. It's on the turns. A lot of horses have to slow down when they take these turns. Nick's go is the horse that accelerates on them. So this is probably the perfect scenario for him. And once you put a head in front of a horse, Charlatan is forced to go wide and use more energy to stay outside. So that was a good effort. I'll ask you this. Had Charlatan not had Nick's go's attentions in this part of the race, do you think he'd have held on from Mishriff or not? Ooh, good question. You know, I'm I'm not entirely sure. You can see right now Charlatan's still flicking his ears around. I don't know if he actually had anything extra to give. The thing about Charlatan is he has a really high cruising speed, but he only has a very little kick after that. You know, he devastates horses with that acceleration early, and he just wasn't able to put that completely to use because there was another horse in the field that had that same thing. Nick's Ghost finishing effort ultimately was a weak one. He fades into, into sixth place. Great Scott has run an excellent race in third. Great Scott did. I think the problem with Nick's go is when you look at that horse and what he does, generally he gets no pressure. But today, not only had the pressure, but had another horse go faster than him. He just wasn't able to deliver late. David Egan. Arm aloft has won the Saudi Cup. And the colors of Prince Faisal on Mishrif, who's been just about the complete racehorse today as we check in with Tom Stanley. Yeah, walking alongside Tony Proctor and the winner of the $20 million Saudi Cup. Uh, the presentation is taking alongside us. Tony, travelling head loud to John Gosden, what does this mean? Oh, that's it. Unreal. It's like a dream come true, isn't it? Of uh, all your, your tricks around the world, where does this rate? Well, it's hard to beat an able winning uh, in the Breeders' Cup, but I mean, it's a very close. It's very close there. I mean, it's exceptional. It's, they treat us very good over here and that, so uh, it's a pleasure to come, that's for sure. And for him to go one better than last year is even better. What about the resolution of this horse to have a turf campaign and come back on the dirt, his second start on the dirt, and stay on like that? Well, when you work for a trainer like John Garston, you know, he knows how to get horses ready. He's, he's the best in the world at it as well. So you can't second guess what the governor does. Did you, did you have any doubt on him in a race like this up against the Americans? Any doubt he could do that? No, because we had it in the back of our mind that he ran so well here last year and he got left a long, long way. And all he did was improve all year. So he obviously, he obviously went on the dirt last year, so, you know, we were, we were quietly confident. And a word on 21-year-old David Egan? Oh, he's exceptional, one. He? He, was, he was brilliant, you know. He can't fault the way he rode the horse, and uh, he's just getting better, isn't he? Tony, well done. There's the winner of the Saudi Cup, Mishra. Cheers, yeah, thanks very much. And the magnificent Saudi Cup trophy. It is not an understated item, but nor should it be. Designed by the House of Garrard, presented by the Crown Prince of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, His Highness Mohammed bin Salman, to His Highness Prince Faisal, the owner of Mishri. And these maroon and silver silks have been carried for four decades by some of the world's best racehorses, but there will never have been a prouder moment, either for the owner or for his young retained rider, David Egan. Bady Gosden, son of multiple champion trainer John to the right, has overseen proceedings here in Riyadh this week, and it has come to a pretty glorious conclusion, Michelle. We got the showdown that we wanted, and then a little something extra, Nick. It was full of international flair. It was full of excitement, and I think that we saw a, a race that we will remember next year very, very fondly. Let us make no bones about it. This has not been a straightforward event to undertake this year in the grip of a global pandemic, but the show had to go on for it to retain its place in the global horse racing firmament. Not only that, we had to have a great horse race here. And in Mishrif and Charlatan, we have had two horses who have served us up an absolute thriller. And after his gallop.